Hey guys, welcome to the 2014 riding season. We want to thank you for all your support, even over the winter months. We reached over 4,000 fans on our Facebook page. Things are really going good, and we have to thank you for that. This season, we're going to have lots of cool rides, cool bikes, but most importantly, cool people and cool stories. I think you're going to like it. Let's enjoy the ride together. This week on Steel Horse Thunder. Fired up the bikes for the first time this season, and we headed down to Martinsville for the Ron Taylor Memorial Ride. Ron Taylor was a super nice guy. He was always involved in uh, anything to do with the kids. When they're out there with the wind blowing in their hair and feeling that freedom on a bike, uh, they'll know that Ron's experiencing the ultimate freedom right now. What better way to start a new season than with a new line of motorcycles? They're very committed to the motorcycles, and now with this iconic brand as a partner, it's just a great relationship. They don't like the bikes, the loud noises, it scares them. Well, they, they scare me sometimes too. <laughs> it's called Coffee and Donuts, Breakfast the Champions. <laughs> Steel Horse is brought to you by Leidendorf Law with over 60 years experience in motorcycle and automotive injury cases. The choice we make often affects our family and future. For most, riding is a choice easily made to escape life's daily routine. Accidents can happen to the most seasoned rider through no fault of their own. Make the choice to select a seasoned attorney if the worst happens to you and you are involved in an accident with injuries. Leidendorf Law has been representing injured bikers for over 34 years. Call us first. Leidendorf Law, like family, because we are. You hear that little voice? It says, meet me where the road touches the sky. It's time to ride. And when you're on the road, Make sure you have rider insurance. Rider is focused solely on the motorcycle community and has been for almost four decades. We know what it's like to feel the wind on our face because we're riders ourselves. Come see the difference. Ride with Rider. Hey, we're here in Martinsville for the Ron Taylor Memorial Ride. We're going to learn a bit about Ron, the project he has going on here in town. We got a lot of cool people out here, a lot of cool bikes, perfect weather. Hey, it's riding season. Kathy, can you tell me what it means to you to have this ride being put on in, in, in your husband's honor? It's very moving. Um, my husband was very community oriented and uh, loved the community of Martinsville, grew up here, and he had a heart for the children of, the, of our area and worked very hard in the last few years of his life to get this club up and going just was not able to pull it off and I'm very happy that they are continuing the work and trying to, to get this uh, uh, club opened. And that's what a true legacy is. Um, when, when, when one goes everybody else pitches in and uh, I tell you it's got to warm your heart to see how many people are showing up today. It definitely does. It does. The love is just, I mean you just feel the uh, love and the just the love for my husband and and the love for his cause so it's it's wonderful well can you tell me a little bit about the ride today where you guys are going to head to yeah, we're going to leave lincoln street and then uh, hit rob hill across uh, 67 and uh, go to wilbur and have uh, lunch at the church there and from there we're going to ride in through paragon down 67 go to cataract falls have a nice stop there so we'll, we'll have a nice ride about 70 miles today Nice, that sounds good. And you know, lunch at church is always good, man. Church, churches know how to do food. The women there, we, we had a ride there three years ago and the food was fantastic, really was. I always love rides that stop at a church for eating because I'm telling you what, there's no better eating. So what brings you out to the ride today? Well, it's a good cause, you know, to help a, a fellow officer and uh, just for the, uh, the benefit of supporting the organization. Well, there's a lot of you guys here today, and you guys are from everywhere today, aren't you? Uh, there's guys from Peru. I'm actually out of Indianapolis chapter. There's several of my members down here, Martinsville, Connersville. I know it has several people here. So, yeah, from all over the state, we're pretty well spread out down here today. Well, I'm here because I've known Ron for, gosh, about 15 years, and I've been his pastor for a majority of that time. So I'm here to send off the bikes and uh, bless the bikes and also talk about uh, the, the importance of tribute, the importance of remembering. 
that's why we're here and i feel like um when we remember a life it's people are here not because they know ron but because ron impacted them and so uh really to m remember ron on this one year anniversary of his passing is um is important because all these people have been impacted and to carry on that impact that's the only thing that we really have left is our impact we can leave this life but uh but our impact remains and uh, that's what we're here to celebrate today hey glenn can you tell me a little bit about your organization the blue knights uh, yeah the blue knights uh started in 1974 uh, this is the 40th anniversary the uh, international meeting is going to be held in austria this year so a lot of people from the U.S. won't make it. Uh, they started with five, uh, five officers in that area. They got together and, and they become founding fathers. They started the, um, the motorcycle club and it's uh, law enforcement related. You have to be a law enforcement officer or a reserve officer. And every 10 members for each chapter, you can have one honorary. And we have one special honorary, which is a chaplain that can be in each chapter. Uh, there's over 600 uh, chapters worldwide now in uh, 32 countries. We have over 20 some thousand members. You know, and that fluctuates of course up and down a little bit, but it kind of hoovers right around 20,000 right now. So does that mean when we do a ride with you guys, we can run red lights? Uh, sometimes they do with the um, <laughs> escorted rides. <laughs> I've rode with the governor several times and I don't think any red lights have any bearing. All right, I see you're on crutches today. Um, can you tell me about, um, did you have an accident? Yeah, when I, was a kid, I was, when I was a kid, I got hurt south of town here. I've been in a wheelchair and on crutches for since I was 14 years old. Wow. But you're still riding a bike? Yeah, I got a gold wing trike. With the, when these trikes come out, it's the greatest thing in the world because I used to ride even when I had crutches on a regular sickle with some friend of mine. They, when I first started trying it again, they'd actually hold the bike up for me. I'd get on it, get it started, and take off. And then when we stopped, they'd stop and I'd circle the parking lot and then pull up, stop, and they'd grab it. And... Wow. <laughs> we didn't do that long. No. We didn't do that long. They, just local stuff here, not big rides. All right, so you got the dogs out here. Um, do they ride on a motorcycle? No, they, uh, they don't like the bikes, the loud noises that scares them. Well, they scare me sometimes too. <laughs> but we like to we like to come out here and we like to watch and we're this is a good day for a ride and a good cause too. About how many people you think you're going to have out here? I think we'll probably have about 80 if we're lucky, but uh, we still got them coming in. Uh, of course, bikers are uh, noted for being uh, last minute. You know, if your if your kickstands are up at 11, they're, you generally get about 30 of them come in at five till. You know, that is so true. I, I know people try to do the uh, register online and pre-register and all that stuff, and I just tell people, you know, it just doesn't happen that often. Yeah, but uh, we, we want to thank uh, the people of Martinsville. have been really nice to donate uh, prizes for us and, and uh, uh, supply us with uh, uh, monies and everything for the uh, youth center. And, uh, but uh, the community has been really good about supporting our cause this year. And Ron Taylor was a super nice guy. He was always involved in uh, anything to do with kids. He was behind it, and, and uh, he spent about five years uh, with the youth center. So can you tell us a little bit about the youth club? Yes, um, they have been, uh, there's been a building donated uh, to for this club, and it's called the Martinsville Youth Center. Um, there will be, it will be open to children uh, in the evenings after school um, from I believe it's uh, elementary age up through junior high. They will have uh, the opportunity to go to this center after school for study time. They will have a workshop, the plan is to have a workshop uh, for with computers where they can do any kind of research that they need to do for their homework. They can, they'll have snacks, they'll have playtime. They're taught how to, so many things are lost in today's society uh, with respect and uh, uh, just just the simple being knowing how to be polite they've lost that art it's kind of a lost art in our in our generation but these are the things that they will be taught it, the value of another individual the value of saying thank you and please and being respectful to their parents uh, 
to their the uh, people that are in charge at the club. They're taught the, these just standard values that most of us grew up with, that they're not privy to that in today's society. Well, you know, and the cool thing is, is, is a place, here we are in Martinsville, Indiana, not the biggest town in the country. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times, small towns, you see a lot of youth getting in trouble, and you wonder why, and when you look, you find out there's nothing for them to do in the small town. And uh, I think it's really cool that you guys are starting something like this. So did you know Ron Taylor? Yeah, I knew him ever since, uh, even before I got hurt. His, he actually lived across the street from my mom uh, in the 70s. And, and when I started riding again, the first ride I went with the Blue Knights, he, him and another guy was the first two guys that greeted me and had me start riding with them. You know, the weather's really cooperated today. I don't know why we're standing inside. Uh, it's called Coffee and Donuts, Breakfast of the Champions. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, because we were just talking about how, you know, all winter long, I'm sick of this winter. I can't wait for the sun to come out and get it warm so we can be outside. And here we are standing inside inside a room. Everybody's got the same opinion right now. It's, it's time. It's time to get out. This winter was the, probably the worst we've had for a while. And hoping this isn't a future thing to come. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah, we're ready. I'm, I'm just glad that they're uh, including honoring God in this situation. We can honor a life, but God's the creator of life. And, um, and uh, Ron was a man of faith as well. And so combining it with his friends and having the freedom ride and I think when they're out there with the wind blowing in their hair and feeling that freedom on a bike, uh, they'll know that Ron's experiencing the ultimate freedom right now. Well said. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to let you go because I know you got a lot to do, and uh, we appreciate your prayers, appreciate your blessing, and just appreciate you being here. Well, I love being here. I love being around people, so uh, it's a great privilege for me as well. All motorcyclists are invited to the 21st Annual Miracle Ride benefiting Riley Hospital May 31st and June 1st. On Saturday, poker runs from around the state will bring the riders into Lucas Oil Raceway Park. And Sunday, the big ride starts at Allison Transmission. Don't forget, the Miracle Trail Riding Race is June 7th and 8th. Miracle riders have donated more than $4 million to Riley Hospital since 1993. Get all the Miracle Ride details online at MiracleRide.net. Ride with us and make miracles happen for the kids at Riley Hospital. One thing riders have in common is they all have a story. Sometimes it's where you've been. Sometimes it's where you're going. Whether those stories are long or short, happy or sad, or old or new, they offer a small glimpse into our souls. For most, the terms personal injury and attorney aren't topics you look forward to talking about. Unfortunately, someday you may need an attorney. So the next time you see me or anyone from Leidendorf Law on an event, come up and tell us your story. Because there's nothing like going on a journey and living to tell the tale. Leidendorf Law, like family, because we are. Now it's time for the Southside Harley-Davidson Woman Rider. Well, you know, I had it pointed out to me, and um, I've been a man long enough to know that I'm always going to be wrong anyway when a woman's talking to me, and I was wrong again. Turns out, we never featured Cindy as a female rider on this, on this show. So, that being said, I want to talk to Cindy. Cindy, tell me about your bike. Um, I ride a Harley-Davidson Street Bob. Um, I love it. It's it's a it's a great bike. It has character because of the flaw that's in it. And you can explain what happened. In it. <laughs> Two weeks, folks. Two weeks is what it took me to put that crease in that gas tank for her. Anyway, so tell me a little bit about your riding experience. What made you decide to start riding a motorcycle? Uh, I started riding in 2000, um, mainly because I wanted to be able to trail our kids. <laughs> so we. I went ahead and went through the Abate Rider course, um, loved it, started on a 250 Rebel 
and moved up to a Buell Blast and now this bike and I love this bike. It, it fits me perfect. Uh, we've done a lot of rides on it, great rides on it. So so for all the little ladies out there, now you stand a whopping five foot two and you're riding a big V-twin Harley. So what would you say to other other women that may not be, uh, that may be a little vertically challenged as yourself? Um, I would say this is a great bike for, for anybody that's challenged like me because, because um, we did have a, the back end lowered an inch and it still fits me perfect. I, I can't be flat footed, but I'm flat footed enough to where I can hold up the bike. What kind of riding do you like to do? Um, I love to ride in the mountains. I love to ride on the twists and turns and um, probably one of the, my favorite rides was the Trail of Tears ride that we went on in 2001 and it was right after 9-11 and it was uh, it was just for me it was part of my heritage because it's about the Cherokee Indians and and the Trail of Tears so for me it was just a very emotional ride. All the Indians that were on the hills it was just amazing because even though we were doing a ride for the Trail of Tears it was such a patriotic trip there were flags flying um, everywhere the Indians in full dress up on the mountainside and for me it was very emotional. I just remember having tears in my eyes riding, doing that ride. The, the ride itself was, um, I think it was 52 miles long, so it was a very long ride, but it was, it was a very good ride, so I mean that's probably one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah and that ride, um, you know, that happened right after the, the Twin Towers had fallen. That was the very next weekend after that it all happened, you know, thus the patriotic. Um, symbolism and everything else and I know when you say 52 miles long you're talking about the trail the, the, the line of motorcycles the ride itself was like 240 miles long but the the line of bikes there was there was a lot of motorcycles out there close to a hundred thousand strong uh, and it was a pretty memorable time yes it was it was very memorable what kind of future plans do you have uh, I would love to ride out west I'd like love to ride to Alaska um, those are two of my most the two of the most wanted rides to do. Um, I'd love to go to Glacier, to out west, to just all the different sites that are out there. I'd love to ride in the in the Rocky Mountains, and um, so I, that's my plans. <laughs> so you don't have to be a big burly biker to be badass, do you? Well, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you talking to us finally about your motorcycle and your experiences and. Uh, I really hope you have a lot more ahead of you. I do too. <laughs>
the variety that you have here. I mean, this is a pretty cool place. If you want a, if you want a cruiser, if you want a sport bike, I mean, it's all here under one roof. I think, you know, we have one of the most perfect blends of European and American mm -hmm. motorcycles now. From some of the hottest sport bikes with the BMW S1000RR, the adventure bikes and the new lineup that BMW has brought out and Triumph has brought out, Daytona 675, which is now becoming legendary on the track, uh, all the way to the most comfortable cruisers, most reliable motorcycles, and it's uh, just a great destination location to come and take a look at European and American bikes all under one roof. No doubt, but I'll tell you what, what's really sparked my interest is I understand you guys are now carrying the new line of the Indian motorcycles. We are. It's a fantastic lineup. We're just recently uh, finished with the install of the new dealership uh, material and it's a, it's a great bike by a great company now that Polaris ownership of Indian mm -hmm. is uh, going to make that continue to move forward without any worries in the consumer's mind about how long will this venture go again. Uh, they've done a wonderful job in the R&D, they've done a wonderful job in the engineering and they rolled out some of the greatest bikes as noted by every industry magazine that's out there. Cool, well, can we go take a look at them? Absolutely, let's do it. All right, Gene, this is what I've been waiting for. Tell me a little bit about the new Indians. I think uh, everybody's been waiting for this and they've launched just a wonderful bike. Uh, Polaris bought the Indian brand from Stelican, uh, the Kings Mountain brand, a few years back. They took their time in launching the bike, went through it completely, wanted to ensure that everything was correct before they ever released it. They went out and purchased several motorcycles from different decades, different years, to ensure that they followed the heritage of the bike, to make sure that they took a look at the folks who had been there before and the folks who were gonna come there after and make sure that it was period correct as well. That was really cool. Um, so which one, what are we looking at right here? This is the flagship bike form. It's called the Chieftain. Hard bags, mounting, fairing, and so forth. Electronic start, just push the button, keep the fob in your pocket. Cruise control, electronic windshield. I mean, it's just a beautiful bike, an 111 cubic inch Thunderheart engine that powers it. And if you take a look at it, even to the heads, uh, it is period correct from back in the 50s and so forth. So they really followed it. Uh, beyond the, the Chieftain, we have the vintage with the leather distressed bags and seat. And then the classic, which is the, the bike with no bags, no fairing, just a windshield for that streamlined look. And obviously you can add anything thing to it to make it your own bike however you'd like to do. So what made you decide to go with the Indian now? You know, Indian has always been an iconic brand. Uh, I started my career in the motorcycle business with Indian in Indianapolis when it was out of Kings Mountain, California. And uh, they did a great job for about five years. And unfortunately, the money dried up and they went dormant and went out of business. So several years later, a guy named Steve Julius bought it, initiated the brand again, Kings Mountain, South Carolina. Uh, did a great job with it, probably at the wrong period of time and at a very increased price from what we had seen previously. So again, it was pretty tough to make that work and be financially sound and they went out of business. The Polaris company bought them, I think it was probably around 2011 that they purchased them, then worked through all the product lineup and brought it back out. Indian's the oldest American brand out there since 1901. Uh, they ran until 1954, then Gilroy brought it back in 1999, and then as we know it moved forward with Kings Mountain and now with Polaris. I think it answers the question that a lot of customers that I've dealt with over the years have always had a concern about, how long will they be here this time? Mm -hmm. Obviously Polaris is a very deeply rooted company. They've had the Victory brand for many years. They are very committed to the motorcycles and now with this iconic brand as a partner, it's just a great relationship. Well, I'll tell you, I've been on the Victories and, and I've always said if I'm going to buy another brand new motorcycle, it would be a Victory. Now. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> rode one of these yet. I haven't taken one down the road or anything. Um, but my gosh, they are nice looking bikes. And and I do know the Victories are great bikes. And yep. so I know Polaris does a great job. I know even in the ATV and, and the off-road stuff, it's uh, it's a good name. But what, what, what kind of uh, reviews have they gotten? I know magazines and stuff do a lot of comparison and stuff like that. What have they said? You know, that's a, the nice thing that 
as a person who is contemplating a purchase, you get out there, certainly on the internet there's everything, mm -hmm. but on the magazines you have guys who have been accustomed to writing and reviewing and critiquing, criticizing and praising the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe that, that Indian is going to win Motorcycle of the Year on the Cruiser segment. Everything has been very positive. They've hit a home run. That's their words, not our words. Every magazine that you look at that, that covers this industry has done nothing but praise it from the fit, the finish, the mechanical side of it, and the price, which is significant. You know, when we were in Kings Mountain, this wonderful distressed look leather motorcycle, vintage, beautiful machine was costing thirty-five to thirty-six thousand dollars. Polaris came in, made it better, and is now introducing the bike for eighteen nine ninety nine. Wow! So you know you can go to the top of the line with them mm -hmm. for twenty-three thousand dollars. So a much different uh, look at how they wanted to do and where they wanted to be in the market to get more people available to ride their bikes. Is, is, do you ever have any demo bikes that somebody could actually get on one and see what it's Every like? Every day we do demos and in June we're going to have the demo truck here from Indian. We'll have a nice event here so stay tuned. We'll have that out there to you. But uh, yeah, I, I believe that when you're purchasing a motorcycle you got to get on it and ride it. Mm -hmm. What it feels like sitting on it in the show, showroom is one thing, but does it meet your needs? Mm -hmm. And you know the bottom line is I want to make sure that you're comfortable on a motorcycle, you feel secure and safe on the bike and that you have that one thing that we all want. There's a heck of a lot of fun on it. <laughs> exactly, and that is very true, because there have been bikes I've sat on in a dealership, and I thought, wow, this sits really nice, I really like this, and then I took it out on the road, and 20 minutes later I came back, thought, my gosh, I wouldn't last an hour on this thing. Right. So, I mean, it is, you do have to get out and actually ride them, and um, I'm one of those guys that when I get riding, I like to ride, and I like to... You gotta be comfortable, yeah. so your arms have gotta be right, your legs have gotta be right, your back's gotta feel good. And that's how come there's a variety of different bikes because not one person mm -hmm. is the same as everybody. Everybody has a different need, a different inseam reach and, and the comfortable side of what they want on a motorcycle. And if it doesn't work, the worst thing that you can have is a garage queen that you spend a lot of money on that you don't want to ride. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't serve anybody any good. Right. So let's get you out here, let's test ride you, let's see what fits for you, what works for you. And uh, everybody's good to go there. Hey, that's going to do it for us on episode one of the 2014 riding season. It's great to have these Indians back, good classic bikes. You got the good classic Steel Horse Thunder back. It's time to go ride. And don't forget, it's not what you ride, it's that you ride. Steel Horse is brought to you by Leidendorf Law with over 60 years experience in motorcycle and automotive injury cases. So, hey, we're here in Martinsville, Indiana gonna do it for us today the first season gonna end up in um, uh, oh, shoot. Wilbur Wilbur Indiana <laughs> 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 See, I actually saw this man do the running man on, on, the, on platform, the platform in church when something went awry. I don't know if the sound went awry or something. It, it doesn't and... matter what goes awry. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we, we, spontaneity is the name of the game, man. He, he had to fill in a couple minutes, so he danced. <laughs> <laughs>